In my last video on triode tubes, I demonstrated what happens when you put a positive voltage on the control grid and a negative voltage on the control grid. And we used uh, one of these OT1A, these uh, are triode tubes, somewhere in the early to mid 20s. In this video, I want to use a little bit more modern triode tube, one that has a cathode. Now this cathode has a special coating on it, so it can, uh, when it is heated up with this filament, it can very easily boil off a lot of electrons. Now around this cathode and filament is the control grid. And this control grid is what's going to control the electrons coming off of the cathode and headed toward the positive plate. Now I'm not going to show the the glass envelope that uh, keeps this in a high vacuum and also I'm going to drop the filament because the cathode has got to be heated to the proper temperature to work. Here is an overhead view of that triode. We have our plate on the outside and the control grid and then the cathode. But notice that the control grid is rather close to the cathode. If it were out here, that control grid would have less influence on the electrons leaving the cathode. Now I am showing the plate in red, uh, that means that we have our positive power supply hooked up to it, or our positive source, and the cathode is blue, which is our negative source from the power supply, and the control grid, I'm saying, has no charge right now. And with this setup, there will be some electrons that boil off the cathode and make their way to the plate in all directions. Now if we were to make that control grid a little positive, that control grid will help pull off more electrons from the cathode, but these electrons are moving so fast that Almost all of them, or the vast majority of them, pass right through the grid and continue on to the plate. And again, if we increase the charge, positive charge on that control grid even more, the current from the cathode to the plate will increase. Of course, there's going to be a maximum amount where the tube, once it reaches that point, cannot conduct any more. Now we're back with the control grid without a charge. And now if we make that control grid a little negative, fewer electrons are now hitting the plate. And this is because the cathode, of course, is negative. But when we make that control grid negative, like charges repel. So some of those electrons are being bounced back or held from going to 
the plate. And if we make it even more negative, less electrons will make it to the plate. And if we make it negative enough, it's like turning off the tube. Almost no electrons travel from the cathode to the plate and very, very few electrons uh, escape from the control grid to the plate because the control grid is not heated. Here is a, another view. We are on the cathode looking through the grid and on the other side of the grid is the plate and the plate has got its positive power supply on it and being electrons we want to go through that grid to the plate but if we make that grid more negative you can see that it's getting harder to see the plate or that positive charge on the plate and if we make it negative enough we really can't see the plate at all. I hope this video has helped you understand the internal workings of the triode tube. Thanks for watching.